Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the virtual Perez Art Museum Miami. My name is Marie Vickles, and I'm the Director of Education. And tonight, we are presenting the online version of our Local Views at PAM program with artist Anastasia Samoylova. Our virtual Local Views program is presented with the generous support of the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation and features Miami-based artists sharing their practice and discussing works of art from PAM's exhibition programs that connect in various ways to their own work. As a 21st century museum dedicated to representing the people and communities of South Florida, the Perez Art Museum Miami continues to strive to be a forum for open, honest, and at times challenging dialogue while creating understanding through the power of art. Tonight, I am so happy to present Anastasia Samoybola as her work sublimely explores the visual narrative of climate change and its impact on our daily lives. Before I introduce Anastasia, I would like to acknowledge and thank the incredible team of people that work so very hard to make these programs come together online. Thank you to Anita Bram, Associate Director of Adult Programs and Audience Engagement, Alan Mueller, Membership Manager, and of course, our world-class AV team, Denise Faxis and Andrew Bird. We couldn't do this without you, thank you. Let's get started. Anastasia Samoylova, born in Moscow, now calls Miami home and finds a great deal of inspiration in the natural and man-made environments of South Florida. Her work moves between observational photography, studio practice, and installation. In 2020, she had her first solo museum exhibition of her ongoing project, Flood Zone, at the USF Contemporary Art Museum in Tampa. Currently, Flood Zone is on view as a solo exhibition right here in Miami at Dot 51 Gallery. The exhibition Flood Zone is a psychological portrait of life on the knife's edge of climate change in the southern states of the USA that are facing rising sea levels. With over 80 photographs, a book of the project was published by the accomplished German bookmaker Steidel in 2019. Expanding upon the exhibition, Flood Zone as a publication is Anastasia's photographic account of beautifully subtle and often unsettling images, which capture the mood of waiting, of knowing that our climate is changing and what it is to live with that change. In addition to her studio practice, her work has also been featured in editorial pieces in publications such as Bloomberg Markets, Bloomberg Business Week, and The Guardian. As you watch along this evening on Facebook or YouTube Live, please post questions for Anastasia in the comments section. She will try to answer as many as possible in the Q&A portion of this evening's presentation. And remember, if you value this and other programs presented by the museum, please consider supporting us by going to pam.org backslash donate. So with that said, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Anastasia Samuelova. Thank you, Marie, and thank you, Pam, for inviting me. I'm thrilled to be presenting for you. Um, it's a little strange to be talking into the void. I mean, I have the support of my wonderful gallery here, Dot 51, from which I'm um, walking you through my show. Um, what a time to do it. Uh, we all see what's happening now in California. And then next week we have king tides coming up in Miami Beach. So I was researching a place to uh, relocate my car, uh, higher ground. Um, so here we are, dot 51, the first image here. I'll just jump right into it because Marie has done such a wonderful introduction. Uh, there's not much left to be said about myself. Uh, I moved to Miami in 2016. It was the hottest summer on record. And then this year, uh, Miami shattered that record in June. When I moved here from Northeast, it was immediately apparent that there was a profound disconnect between the public image that the place presents and the reality. This is an economy built on tourism and real estate boom 
So the place presents a relentlessly positive and glamorous image of itself. This is Miami's notorious pinks here. It's the reflection in South Beach. However, we know that Miami is slowly sinking. Sea levels are rising. Hurricanes are more powerful and more frequent. And within a few years, it's very likely that Miami, um, it's going to be transformed, if not abandoned. Um, I will start here. So this is, you can imagine, the entrance to the exhibition. I started this project really speculatively. As Marie mentioned, um, my book, Flood Zone, was published last year. Um, and it, this here is a selection of works from, from this series. There are about 80 photographs in the book and uh, 22 in this exhibition. And this is the scale I sort of envisioned those images in when I was taking them. I was thinking today of something new to say about this project. Uh, and I recalled an early memory uh, when I was living in Moscow. I was walking around one day and um, I came into photography sort of by accident later on. Uh, it was just really a tool, like a utilitarian tool for me in the college back in, back in Russia. I had to record my spaces and, and um, architectural models for my first degree in environmental design. So I learned photography by practicing it. And then one day, I think, uh, for a class in introduction to photography, I was taking pictures of some factory building in Moscow, and I was stopped in my tracks and made um, to delete the images from my camera. I had an early digital camera, and the guard of the factory didn't like that I was, that I was shooting. And I was in a public space, uh, and I just remembered it. It sort of it slipped me for a long time, but I thought maybe that's the reason why I chose photography later on and then chose a country where I could freely photograph and not have to delete my pictures. So I grew up in Moscow, as Marie said, a very different environment from Miami. Um, in Moscow, you had no reason to believe that nature can just come in and take over at any moment, um, like I have felt here ever since I moved. Um, when I left Moscow in 08, global warming was the term most used to describe what we're uh, experiencing now, which is now really global heating. Uh, so this first diptych, it became a diptych because these images were placed together on the pages of my book. Um, you see the palm tree here grasping for dear life uh, in eroded soil and an image of printed uh, tarp, which is a frequent motif uh, throughout the series, covering up an unsightly view of Miami downtown. And this was taken in one of the parks. So it's sort of the contrast between, you know, the proposed reality, the idealized uh, version of Miami and, and what's, um, what's out there now. All right, so moving on, <laughs> so I don't get hold up too, too long. Uh, as you walk in, this first image I'd like to focus on is the one that's actually on display at the Perez um, Art Museum. So this is the fountain from 2017. And this is one of the earliest images. Uh, in fact, this is the image that made me realize that I really have a project here. Uh, many of the visual and conceptual elements that interest me are all in this one image. You have the signature Miami palette, the pinks, the turquoise, and the tension between reality and something dreamlike or a bit nightmarish. It's almost sort of a cubist or montage-like composition, even though it's a completely straightforward image. There's a play of light that illuminates, seduces, and confuses all at once. And of course, the presence of water, which seems both attractive and a bit unsettling. And I no longer can find that building. So speaking of change, another foreigner that came to the United States to photograph was Robert Frank, my big inspiration. And he said, I am always looking outside, trying to say something that is true, but maybe nothing is really true, except what's out there. And what's out there is constantly changing. 
change is really the subject of this work. Not as much, you know, what you would expect under the title flood zone, except maybe for this image here to the right. Um, this image here um, of the dome house, this is from 2018 at Cape Romano of the coast of Southwest Florida. So this is a cluster of concrete domes that were once a house. It was built by a man in the oil business. And this was originally built on land with about 700 foot setback from the shore. So um, this was built in 81, quite <laughs> not as long as, as you would expect from, uh, from the condition it's in right now. Um, and then throughout the course uh, of several hurricanes and then Hurricane Irma in 2017, um, this is now completely submerged in water. Uh, two domes have been knocked down. Um, this is, um, it's almost impossible not to see it as a symbol or allegory. To me, it looked like some kind of surreal creature from a Dali painting. And the, the structure is now a stark sign of the ever-shifting landscape. Moving on to here, my pinks. Uh, pink is really the most approachable color, and yes, the most odd and most Miami, I think. Um, it kind of wants to be liked, but its heightened effects can be uncanny. A pink image can get to that mix of seduction and the otherworldliness that is the essence of life in the subtropics. This staircase here, leading to the mirror-like surface of a rising king tide seemed to me like a set from a movie. The actors are absent, leaving an empty stage. It's perfectly still, but not for long. The next image uh, right here is Park Avenue. I made this photo on the corner of the street in Miami Beach, where I live, where a printed construction billboard sheltered an empty facade of a historic Art Deco hotel, gutted for renovation. It's still like that. Um, in the foreground is the city's iconic pink sidewalk. A shadow from the signpost extending to the image with an image disrupting the trompe l'oeil. As with all my photos from the project, um, they are seldom direct reportage of the climate change. So this image is a visual metaphor questioning a reality that's increasingly built of images and a future that nobody has guaranteed but what can try and imagine in a perfect shade of dusted pink. Next one right here is one of the most recent ones, and it's not even in the book. This is Venus Reflection um, from 2020, right before COVID has started. Um, in Greek mythology, Venus was the goddess of beauty and fertility, but this Venus is a mirror in a shop window in Miami's design district. Um, she hovers, pure but blank in a, reflect, in a refracted fantasy of materialism and leisure. My observational photographs often look like collages, bits and pieces together, but this is a straightforward reflection. And sometimes it's the world itself that's a collage, particularly the world of consumerism with its kaleidoscopic distractions. Moving on, there's this wall. This is an image of duck eggs in Opalaka. I've been coming to Opalaka multiple times trying to photograph the Moorish architecture, but it always ended up way too kitschy and sort of like a postcard. So I ended up looking at the ground. This one here is actually from Georgia. What I um, maybe haven't, no, haven't mentioned yet is that the book contains not just Miami, um, it's um, South Florida, Central Florida, Okeechobee area, Merritt Island, but also Georgia, Louisiana, and coastal areas of South Carolina. So this is a ruin of Tabby construction in St. Mary, Georgia. In 1936, the photographer Walker Evans was on assignment in the American South. In St. Mary's, Georgia, he visited the ruin of a sugar mill made of tabby, which is formed from crushed seashells, you can see here. In 2018, I passed through the St. Mary's and found the ruins still there. The place is dreamlike, surrounded by thick forest. We all know that sugar mills were often operated by slave labor, and you could feel the tension 
between that moment and the dark Gothic beauty of the place. I walked around the building, tracking the light, thinking of working life must have been like there, then of Walker Evans being there and my own relation to the place and of photography's strange relation to time. There's also an undeniable historic connection between the exploitation of labor, capitalism, and we, where we are now with the environment. Moving on, this is again from 2020, one of my road trips. Actually, Marie mentioned that exhibition, my first museum solo uh, at USF Contemporary Art Museum in Tampa. In, um, I really lucked out in February. Um, this is salts protruding from concrete. And to me, it looked like abstract painting. Um, this is Biscayne Bay, my reflection, and a very obvious homage to Lee Friedlander, American photographer. So you can see both the shadow and the reflection. There's Miami's iconic skyline in the background. And that orange sunset light is illuminating a little gecko that went up on a glass, um, glass sort of fencing of a luxury condominium. And this is in the west um, side of Miami Beach. This is where I was really questioning my presence um, <laughs> amidst this uh, landscape and urban landscape and wondering how secure my roots can be in a place like this. Um, moving on here is one of my aerial images. This is, uh, this is displayed frameless. Um, it's a print on metal. I like the reflections that are happening on the surface of that metal print. This was actually done on assignment for a magazine, um, Bloomberg uh, Business Week. So this is done from a helicopter. Um, and I was working with a reporter who was writing a story on Biscayne Aquifer uh, and the pollution, you know, water salination, a number of issues here. Um, but I noticed you know, the peculiar shape of the lake. There are mines in the background and the lake itself is geometric form with sort of acidic hue of, of turquoise in the middle, um, seemingly intruding into this natural landscape that's right next to, that's located right next to the Everglades. And this is something you see when you land in Miami International. You can have, even find it on the, um, on the map. But it turned out that there's actually invasive tree species. So Maluka trees are all over here. Uh, so this is already, so the natural landscape has been compromised. And then moving on around the show, this here is a flamingo. How could I not? Of course, it's Florida. Um, the form is abstracted by the tree in front, uh, which is thrown out of focus. So it's a really shallow depth of field. And then this stark eye um, in the contrast, and of course, the, again, the, um, the pink here and then moving on one of the very few um, images of the actual disaster catastrophe is this photograph here um, black and white um, again metal print of a boy walking into a flooded garage wearing a bicycle helmet this is a very personal one the image is actually on the day after hurricane irma and you can see my shadow in the corner um, and this is a flooded garage of a condo building where um, where we live and this is, this is my son. So this is when I started thinking of how in our generation, we might not face the worst of climate change, but theirs really won't have any time um, that they could waste. And then I want to move on. There's another room and I just want to acknowledge uh, the curation of this exhibition that was done by wonderful curator of Dot 51, Veronica Flom. I wouldn't be able to have you know, come up with this layout. It really takes a village um, to build an artist, that's for sure. Um, and then here we have the blue room. Uh, again, another aerial image uh, made on commission for another story. So this is a road near Merritt Island. It seemed quite surreal but it's again a straight image just converted to black and white. And then here, this is a, an interesting pair, uh, sort of a meta pool image within image. There are quite a few of those in the book as well. This is my sort of motif throughout the, the series. Um, so it's in Sunny Isles, what I 
gotten to know as Shady Isles because the tall buildings throw shade on the entire beach. And then all this luxury, luxury, one more luxurious than the other condos, uh, car shade. Here, Miamians might recognize this place really well. So this is Vizcaya, the tea room in Vizcaya Gardens. Uh, this was taken in 2017, um, just after really it was a small rain and then it flooded really quickly. Um, nostalgia is a bit of a taboo word when it comes to photography, but it can't help but wonder, you know, what's going to be at loss? What's going to be, what's at stake in this climate change game? Um, and the sky is a historic estate from 1910s, I believe. Um, yeah, difficult. Then moving on to this wall, um, pool here, uh, one of my favorites. So the scattered over the pool water is a patchwork of lime green leaves that glimmer and they look like a Monet painting. Um, it, in fact, this idyllic photo is actually a scene um, after Hurricane Irma when mangrove leaves were chopped up and just thrown over the pool. Um, the images of unsettled beauty recur throughout my project. There are signs of extreme realities beyond the frame. Um, here on the right is um, the mass in St. Petersburg. Um, this reminded me of a scene in The Birds, um, the Hitchcock movie, when birds were gathering. And it's really early in the morning, so the sepia warmer tone is from the sun um, just just rising and they were very loud so it was a bit haunting often it's very small things that attract my attention like this over painted roots here things when where the photogenic meets a feeling of slight disturbance photography frames things and points things out obviously but it also turns those things into complex signs of themselves that's why photography is such a fascinating medium for me. And um, I came to it a bit later on in my career. Um, so with this project, I really want to show that climate change is not an abstract concept. Um, to me, it's important to communicate that this is not a future event. The increase in temperature with all the outcomes is exponential. And we really don't want to wait for decades um, to plan for retreat. One of my favorite writers on the subject and other subjects uh, is Rebecca Solnit. Uh, she writes a lot on the love for a place. Um, I hope that love is felt throughout the project in this book. Um, to love something, you need to understand it, I believe. The beauty here is so overwhelming, but the vulnerability is undeniable. My project is as much about getting to know Miami as it is about climate urgency. Um, there's a great quote from Solnit. Many people nowadays live in a series of interiors disconnected from each other. On foot, everything stays connected. For while walking, one occupies the spaces between those interiors in the same way one occupies those interiors. One lives in the whole world rather than in interiors built up against it. I do believe that beauty, pleasure, and joy um, can inspire people to do really difficult things. Um, okay, on, on this, I think I should, I should end, right? My presentation, I think that I'm right on time. There's a lot of walking in this project. Um, yeah, so I'll come here. Am I, yes, time-wise? All right, yeah, moving to Anita. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, that was amazing. I feel like I've seen a lot of comments in the chat about how poetic your work is and how poetic the descriptions are. And I think that's a, a totally accurate way to describe it. So thank you so much for walking us around the space and your work. Um, I know the audience is getting warmed up with questions, but we do have the first question from Jordan Levin. Um, they ask, what attracts your attention to, to a place and makes you want to photograph it? Do buildings, light, moment, catch your eye and do you realize later the ideas contained in the photograph? Um, thank you for your question. Great question, Jordan. Yes, you, you got it. You know, it was a sense of curiosity. I was coming from a very different place and I had 
really no preconceived idea of Miami. I sort of heard of it, you know, this tourist paradise. But when you are you're becoming a true local, um, I believe it's it's best done by walking, you know, and that's why I quoted Solnit. So it was just my early morning expeditions all throughout the city and then the suburbs and then road trips around. Um, and only after about a year of just loose speculative shooting, because I'm a photographer, but really just to get to know the place, I realized um, what the pressing issues are. And the project is really, you know, it's it's my attempt to, um, you know, raise the alarm and to preserve the place. Thank you. Um, I have a question from myself. Um, what do you think artists' role are or could be in in the you know in protecting the environment and the places that they function and practice in? Um, I believe that art operates by osmosis. You know, it might not be direct action. Um, I'm just your everyday citizen. I'm concerned citizen, but I can't even call myself um, an activist. Really. Really, this is taking so much time. <laughs> um, I I hope it can inspire people. You know, it, I I don't believe that um, visualizing catastrophe uh, will accomplish what I what I want to accomplish. Uh, so that's why there's very little, um, very few images that are of disaster, you know, direct disaster. I'm very aware of desensitizing my audience. And because I don't come into this from photojournalism, there's never really a dramatic frozen motion in any of these. They're still and layered and they require you to pause um, and sort of unpack the image. But on the surface, they are appealing, often seductive, and that's very purposeful. Um, I am hoping to attract a very wide audience to this work where you know a dialogue can be created. Yeah, I can certainly appreciate that. They do, they pull you in while also not desensitizing the viewer, as you said. So I can appreciate that. And I know them from seeing them up close myself. Um, they're absolutely beautiful and stunning. We have a comment and a question from Mark Raymond. Um, they say, the work is visually compelling and conjures a vibrant beauty set within what feels like an emerging tragedy. What is the most dramatic change in Miami that you have observed? Um, the most dramatic change we'll see next week. Uh, I've heard of unprecedented level of um, tides next week. Um, just in the spring, I believe many areas here were flooded. Um, I see, you know, my friends post about it. We all share who's got flooded where. Um, some people lost their cars. Some people lost their homes. Um, climate change affects everybody disproportionately. So um, affects underprivileged disproportionately, um, as usual. You know, while we can find higher ground to hide out, um, not everybody can escape. Um, so what I've noticed, areas get flooded more, and it's been only four years of me living here, um, but I already see the change. And of course, talking with locals, you learn about other things. Um, a friend of mine told me about um, playing with seahorses when she was a child growing up in Miami Beach, and that's no longer, that's no longer present, um, and so on. Right, right. And then we approach a whole separate um, set of, you know, a side of the issue with climate gentrification um, and how that affects those communities. So I think that's a whole attached but um, relevant body of work that you could explore <laughs> if I were suggesting. Um, yeah. We have a question from Susan Caraballo. She asks, is the quote from Solnit from A Field Guide to Getting Lost? Uh, from Wonderlust. Wonderlust? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect, yeah. thank you. Um, I guess this is controversial or might be controversial, but do you have a favorite place in Miami to photograph? If mm -hmm. you would tell us. Oh, interesting. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. There are places that are challenging, 
um, that I tried to photograph many times and it just wasn't working out. But this is, you know, the good news is that this is an ongoing project, like all of my projects. Um, this continues and it sort of grows, it's fluid, like all my work. Um, I came back from a road trip from Central Florida the other week. Um, so I'm working on um, sort of like a branch of this that's going to be focused exclusively on Florida with a wider scope of issues within. And then there is, um, you know, natural sort of progression towards north up on East Coast. So it's, it's going to be about the Atlantic coast and all those areas affected. Um, and then fire zone in California, I've already started working on that. Um, so that's a matter of uh, complications right now with travel, depending on where right. I can go. Right. Um, and I guess that there's a related question. Do you have like a preferred time of day or light that you typically photograph? and are you always carrying a camera or cameras on you or do you set out like with a mission to photograph and take work at a certain time of the day? Oh, good one. Um, yes, well, in Florida, there are natural limitations, um, heat and humidity uh, and our very bright sun limits me to morning hours and then afternoon after about 5 p.m. I try during the day, there are some images with very dark shadows that you can notice um, that were taken midday, uh, but those are few. Um, right, when it's tolerable, yeah. intolerable to be outside. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, I get that. Um, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking the time to show us around uh, Dot 51 and your work, and we can't wait to continue following your practice and uh, can't wait for a time to see you in person. And also uh, just a shout out to that everybody can still see these works in person in a distanced way at dot 51 through this weekend, correct? Yes, this weekend is the last weekend. So please come visit us. Um, yeah. It's very, you know, it's big space. You can certainly social distance. <laughs> right. So there's plenty of room. Yeah. Yeah. That's the perfect place to do it. Um, thank you so much, Anna. We can't thank you enough. And kudos to you. Thank you. Thanks for thank you. having me.